these are forecasted conditions at select airports. Usually you can be sure any and all of the big ones, any of the class B's or C's and many of the class D's have them, uh, but not all do. So what you might need to do is if your airport, either you're departing or arriving, does not have a TAF published for it, and you can find that out very easily. We'll show you how to do that later at the end of the session. Then you can uh, just go to the nearest airport that has a TAF and utilize that TAF as your forecast. One of the benefits of the TAF is that it is aviation specific. So it's not like you're going on the Weather Channel or you know Weather Underground or something else that that is just generic and says, hey, tomorrow's cloudy or the next day is partly sunny and you know it'll be a little light rain or this or that. It's kind of very generic. Uh, but specific to aviation, I would want to know, hey, how is that going to affect my big three? How is that going to affect my wind condition or my visibility or my cloud height, my ceilings? The uh, TAF uh, is good for 24 hours. It's good for 24 hours. Uh, and it's issued four times a day. The issue times are six hours apart. And so the first issuance will be ready and available at zero Zulu. So midnight Zulu. Okay. The next one is at six Zulu. And then 12 Zulu. And then 18 Zulu. And then we're back to zero Zulu again. So every six hours you will get a new, uh, a new TAF. Let's take a look. Let's break it down. Now, what you're going to find is, unlike the METAR, we don't get you know all that information like the altimeter setting and the temperature and the dew point. It's just not necessary. What we're going to get is the big three, wind, visibility, and clouds. And ultimately, from a forecast standpoint, that's really what matters. So let's try it. We've got a TAF, and it's amended TAF, by the way, amendment, which means they made this TAF on a off-schedule um, from the typical every six hours. And that's usually because something significant changed. This is for K-A-H-N, uh, which is Athens, uh, Georgia. We have the uh, the uh, timestamp again. We have the 11th day of the month. Again, you should know the month you're living in. Uh, 12.07 Zulu. Now, this next group of information, this, is, this confuses a lot of people. This is also a timestamp. This was the time that it was recorded or made. This is the valid period that it's good for. So it's good for the 11th day, just divide that number into two. It's good for the 11th day of the month at 12 Zulu and it ends tomorrow which would be the 12th in this case of course uh, at 12 Zulu. So it starts on the 11th day at 12 Zulu, it ends on the 12th day at 12 Zulu. So there's your 24 hour forecast outlook. Okay next after that we have some we have the uh, the, the stuff we were waiting for here. So this would be starting at 12 Zulu on the 11th. We would expect 0808 knots, visibility to, uh-oh, uh, not too good, mist, baby rain, overcast at 200 feet. Now tempo, what this refers to is temporarily. What it's saying is we expect the weather to behave as follows. This wind, this visibility, and this ceiling of the clouds, but temporarily on the 11th day at 12 Zulu, ending on the 11th day at 16 Zulu. So there's a little window here they're creating. Temporarily from 12 to 16 Zulu, we expect three quarter mile visibility, light, read this backwards, rain showers, mist, and overcast at 100. This is Dewatts. This is Dewatts.com. So you just need to simply go to dewatts.com. I've already actually logged in. You'll get a login and a password. Uh, you do have to be a registered pilot, but even a student pilot is a pilot, and you will use your number on your medical certificate if you're a student. Otherwise, you will register with your pilot certificate. So uh, make sure to grab that. Dewatts or Dewatt, another great resource. I'm just going to demonstrate Dewatts to you here. So I've logged in. You can see that there are some uh, graphs like the surface analysis, the weather depiction, but it looks a little different than the FAA test version. Uh, it's a little more cartoonish, if you will, or simplified. And um, so you can find that under weather here and weather graphics, lower 48 states, and I can get radar, I can get surface graphics charts, and different kinds of charts. What I'm going to do is go to the weather briefing side here, and you see weather briefings, I got the three we talked about, the standard, the outlook, and the abbreviated briefings. Uh, we mentioned what each of those are. If we're getting a really a first time 
uh, weather briefing, we're going to want to go standard. Notice under the standard, we also get an option online for low altitude, high altitude, or area briefing. Uh, we can pretty much discount the high altitude at this point for a private pilot certificate. So we're going to look at the low altitude and the area briefing. First, the area briefing. The area briefing, it's called the standard area briefing, is a very simple form to fill out. In fact, there's not many fields to fill out in here at all. Departure point, let's just put in, uh, let's say, let's have some fun. Let's say we're at uh, SFO, so KSFO, San Francisco, California. Maybe some nice weather out there, I don't know. Uh, 50 mile radius, so I can just change this. So I just want to uh, get the weather. We'll just say we're aircraft 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and that we're going to depart 30 minutes from now. And I can use this and put this into plain English, or I can get the code. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this in, in detail, so relax. Uh, but I just want to kind of introduce the, the system to you and how to kind of navigate through it. Notice up top here, i got little tabs that I can click, different things like the area forecast. I can snap right to it, and there is my area forecast for the trip. All right, pretty slick, isn't it? Um, I can get the terminal forecast, which was the TAFs. Notice I've got all these TAFs for the areas that I'm passing by. 